Welcome back to Solid State Devices, Section 2. We'll talk about materials in this section. So, we'll uh, have it structured in three different segments here. I'll start out with uh, typical semiconductor materials, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about applications, and then uh, atomic positions and bond orientations. So, let me go into the first segment and remind you briefly that uh, we're after current flow. That is typically our, our goal in this uh, whole course to understand current flow in solid state devices. And again, we need to get after uh, charge densities and uh, velocity of the charges in realistic devices. And for that, we need to look at um, materials, their composition. And in traditional ways, uh, we could uh, almost deal with uh, materials that are uh, tabulated, semiconductor materials like silicon and germanium, where you have material properties that are tabulated. But as we're making things smaller at the nanometer scale, the material properties actually change as a function of, of composition at the, at the nanometer scale, strain, and, and geometry. And we need a methodology to really understand these materials. And that is what the first sections in this course are about, understanding the materials and really developing a methodology for that. We'll later get into a transport, as indicated here, to calculate velocities of particles, etc., to, to really deal with non-equilibrium transport. And then finally, we'll, we'll get to uh, understanding concrete devices. All right. So that being said, let's look at some of the material aspects. We need to deal with atomic uh, composition. We need to deal with arrangement of atoms. And that is really what is happening in crystals. These are the ones uh, that really determine the conduction through the material. So when we think materials, then let's really look at the periodic table. So uh, let's identify the elemental semiconductors in the periodic table. And of course, you are familiar with uh, the various columns of the, uh, uh, the periodic table and the Mendeleev characterization. And what we're looking at here is on the far right in column eight, you have full shells. That's when there's a quote unquote happy bonding of all the uh, electrons in full shells. And uh, silicon and germanium are these elemental semiconductors that we're very familiar with uh, in principle, and they're in column four. And uh, column four is half filled SNP orbital shells. So let's, let's look at some, uh, uh, shells that uh, span from uh, column two to column six. And it's interesting that there is actually a, a part of the table where you have beryllium and magnesium that show up on the far left side, but they're still classified as a column two. And they really deal also with SNP shell filling. And it's uh, just uh, more convenient to think of them as uh, being located here. And with these two to six, we can uh, achieve bondings that are ultimately half filled. All right. So let's focus on this element of the ta uh, uh, component of the table here. Uh, we have columns two through six. And in the very center, you have column four with silicon and germanium elemental semiconductors. All right. Why would we care so much about that? Well, if you take column two and column six, uh, the uh, materials can share electrons uh, across. For example, you could have uh, cadmium telluride, as indicated in the tables, and they can bond together and build together a half-filled uh, shell system. So we're talking about two six semiconductors that can build be built across the table, uh, as indicated in blue. Similarly, you can build. Uh, half-filled sh half shells with three, five semiconductors, as indicated here. So, so these arches or these areas really uh, classify a, her a whole segment of semiconducting materials. In the center, you have the uh, uh, elemental semiconductors. You can build also compounds of those. And you have two, uh, five, uh, six semiconductors, as indicated in blue, and three, five semiconductors, as indicated in red. All right, so really, this is the, the elemental set of uh, materials that we're dealing with uh, when we deal with materials uh, that are semiconducting. 
And in the next section, we'll talk a little bit more about applications of such semiconductors.